Welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we'll conclude our series on the all new digital Power iTIG 200T. We'll be going over some of the basic stick welding features that it has as well as demonstrating the unit with several stick welding rods. We're going to see how it performs. This is our first time welding with the 200T so you're going to be learning right along with us today as we adjust the welder for the best performance. The Power iTIG 200T digital control over the welding arc in stick mode includes several key features. These include hot start intensity, hot start time, arc force control, 6010 capability with a conventional one port design, a smooth low spatter arc and up to 160 amps DC output with a 35% duty cycle at maximum rated amps. I'm going to make a few fillet passes today using some 1 8 inch flat bar. I've ground the surface and I'm simply going to make a T-joint here so that I can weld both sides. Since I'm going to start welding with a 3 30 second 60 10, I'm going to start by taking an educated guess where the welder needs to be set. I want to set it around 70 amps. I'm going to take the unit up to a conservative 60% arc force control. I'm also thinking that a hot start time of about 0.2 seconds might just work well on this rod. And I don't want to overdo it, so I'm setting the hot start at 70%. Now I'm just tacking it up into position. I'm using some older rods and it seems a little cold, so I'm going to readjust it. I'm going to raise the amperage to 75 amps. I'm going to increase the arc force control to 75%. And we'll increase the time to 0.3 seconds. Now I'm going to increase the hot start intensity to about, yeah, you guessed it, 75%. Here you can see the clean low spatter arc that the 6010 330 second has. It's a stable arc and feels surprisingly soft, yet it's clearly penetrating very well. I may have it just a little low on amps, so I'm bumping it up a couple of amps more at the next rod. Here we've bumped it up to about 78 amps and nudged up the arc force control to 85% and it feels just right. Throughout this run I'm taking a few liberties with the arc length to experiment with arc stability and you know what it's staying lit. The unit handles the 6010 quite well considering this is the first well that I've made with it. You can see the beginning is a little cold but after a slight adjustment things improved. Now I'm going to go to the easier rod which is 6011. It's still a cellulose rod but it's considered to be a lot more stable and easy to weld with. This is still a 332nd. Using the same settings, it's a little hot. That was expected, but I wanted to see what the difference was. Now I've dropped it down to 65 amps, and it's pretty smooth. I've left the other settings alone, but could have probably lowered those a little as well.
Now again, I'm experimenting with the art just to see what I can get away with. Now I'm setting the machine up for 7018. I'm going to be using a 1 8 inch rod. I'm starting on the lower third of the recommended range of amperage and I'm lowering the arc force control but increasing hot start time and intensity to increase the startability of the rod. Right away the welder starts smoothly and the metal flows evenly. There's almost zero spatter. The arc is a little intense and I'm guessing I could drop below 30% for arc force control without a problem. Now even with the arc force a little high it's not too violent and after I shot this video I did lower it and it welded perfectly. Now I'm using a typical situation by laying a 7018 over the previous 6010 pass. Now this is common in the industry, so I wanted to see how it would lay over the 6010. If you're listening to the arc, you know it's welding right in the zone. It's a crisp, sweet sound. The little sticking right here is caused by the rods not being stored in a sealed container at the welding supply store and humidity running over 90% for several days. Now as I indicated earlier, these aren't premium 7018s. If I had used something like a Lincoln Excalibur that was sealed from container or out of a rod oven, the slag would have slid right off. But as it is, the slag is chipping and releasing very easily. Here you can see how smooth the weld went down. As you can see, this unit is a capable stick welder as well. It will handle about anything you throw at it up to its maximum amperage. I believe it's an ideal unit for almost any setting requiring DC TIG or stick welding. This concludes our look at the Power iTIG 200T. If you have any questions about it or any of our line of Everlast welders and plasma cutters, give us a call at the number listed above. Thanks for watching this Everlast Power Video Edition.